Today we're going to talk about tuples. Hey, Ryan, can I talk to you about 2556? Five, five, yeah. Well, if I can push 2556 five, by... Hold on for a second. My mom. Hey, mom. Ryan, it's your mother. Are you okay? Listen, your Uncle Marty's getting out of prison this weekend. I need you to come up to New Jersey. We're having a party. Oh, Mom, I love my party hoodies at the cleaners. I expect to see you Saturday at 5 o'clock. I love you. Okay, I'll be there. Not judging, putting aside the whole prison thing, you, you have a party hoodie? You know? Hey, Mom. Oh, Ryan, it's so good to see you. I missed you so much. Where's Dad? He's at the liquor store. Hey, where is everybody? Nobody wanted to come. You're the only person who came. You're a good son. Where's Uncle Marty? He's in the dining room. He'll be so happy to see you. All right. Hey, Uncle Marty. Hey, Ryan, my favorite nephew. Come here, how you been? Oh, not bad, not bad. That's a nice cake. Uh, yeah, yeah, no more Rayless for me. Wink. <laughs> hey, listen, um, uh, need your help with an app. Yeah, sure. What do you need? All right, you know how when you use Craigslist, you always want to meet someone in a safe space, right? Well, this app allows you to find places that are unsafe. You know, places without any cops or cameras, you know, in case you're going to transaction something that's a little more libertarian in nature. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, I got this asynchronous method that searches for the closest cop and passes back position, bearing, and distance from the user. I could use a class to pass this information back, but the cop class is huge. Why pass back such a big class with just three small pieces of data? Uh, I could use a structure, but that's a pain. I could use a ray list to pass back from the async, but uh, I don't want to go to jail again. I tried using an app, but Visual Studio keeps yelling at me. What should I do? Well, have you thought about using a tuple? Duples? Uh, aren't they useless? Maybe when you went to jail they were, but not anymore. So what is a tuple and why is it important for an interview? Well, a tuple is kind of like a, a lightweight data structure that allows you to hold different data types, kind of like a data structure backpack. Think of it like this. You're at a club and you meet someone and you want to get their contact information. So you decide to use AirDrop on your iPhone to pass over the contact information. Now, it takes a little while to set things up, but all the data passes over seamlessly. That's kind of like using a class. A tuple is like writing your contact information down in a napkin and passing it over that way. Now it becomes your responsibility to make sure that data and all those data types get into the correct place in your phone. This is a gotcha question because back in .NET 4.0 when tuples were introduced, they weren't all that useful. But the person who's interviewing you might want to see how much you know about the language. Now, if you want to follow along at home, this code is on my GitHub or my website. Be sure you're using uh, .NET Core or .NET 4.72. And as always, like and subscribe. So there's two components to Uncle Marty's program. There's the app that the user actually looks at, and then there's a back end that stores user reports on where cops are located. Periodically, the back end is going to push information about the closest cop to the user. Now, when you do this, you want to use as little data as possible to get the information across. Number one, it's going to lower your data charge fees on your cloud hosting provider. And number two, it's going to be a little bit faster. So Uncle Marty has this big cop class with stuff like cop type and their awareness, uh, their position, their speed, their bearing, their distance, the type of cop, whether they're armed, aware state. And this class is huge. Do you really want to put this out over the wire? And when you think about it, we really only need three things. We need position of the cop, we need bearing to the cop, and we need the distance to the cop. And with this information, our app can make a decision about whether the cop is too close and we need to pull more data in order to make a decision. Now there's another wrinkle. The method has to be asynchronous because we can't lock up our program every time we wanna look for a cop. Now in an ideal world, you'll be able to use out and pass by reference, but unfortunately, async methods can't have ref in or out in parameters. So that leaves you with the overhead of creating a custom class or a custom structure, or even using something like ArrayList, which really isn't supported anymore to push these three pieces of data back. And this is where tuples save the day. First, let's look at the old way of creating a tuple. Now, back when Uncle Marty went to jail, you had to be very explicit about what you were declaring. Right here, I'm declaring a point, which is position. I'm declaring two integers, which is bearing and distance. But once I actually try to use cop tuple, you notice item one, item two, item three, 
That's how you actually reference this stuff inside of a tuple. And if you want to change it after you were done, sorry, tuples are immutable, read only. And if you want more than eight items in a tuple, you can't do that. Your best bet is to use a class. So you can kind of see why people didn't think tuples were all that useful. But then in 2017, .NET 4.7 rolled around and you had the value tuple. And now you can do a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so here's what's neat about the value tuple. I can create a value tuple and I can actually name the parameters on my tuple. So I created a tuple with uh, integer one and hello tuple, and I'm assigning it to ID and text. Now here's what's kind of cool. Now, if you want to change the value of a tuple after you create it, you're totally free to do so. And remember how tuples were limited to only eight items? Well, now you can have pretty much as many items as you want. And if you want to use the var keyword, you can do that too. As long as you identify the parameters on the right side, using var is totally fine. Heck, you can even use equivalence to see if two tuples are equal in an if statement. So knowing what you know now, how can a tuple help Uncle Marty? Well, here we have our asynchronous method, find closest cop value tuple async. Now I need to return a value tuple that's a point and two integers for bearing and for distance. So all I do is say task value tuple point int int. Now I do my business logic to go figure out where the cops are. Now we're going to actually create and fill up the tuple. Now this information right here, location, bearing, distance, this would come from that for loop up there. So we're just gonna hard code it for now. Okay, so we have our fake hard coded values right here. Now all we need to do is return the my cop tuple and Visual Studio will stop yelling at us. So let's see what happens on the other end. Okay, so here's what it looks like on the other end. We're going to await uh, find closest cop value tuple async, and that is going to return a point int, int tuple, which we're pushing into point location, int bearing, and int distance. Now here's where you gotta be careful. Remember what I said about getting the phone number at the club and putting it in your iPhone correctly? All .NET really knows coming back from this async is types, so it's totally possible for you to accidentally put in distance for bearing or bearing for distance, because all .NET knows is, hey, I'm sending back one point and two ints, and it's up to you to figure out what these things are and deconstruct them. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Okay, so let's prove that this thing works. And we got the you know, location, bearing, and distance. Everything works. So if you're ever asked about tuples in an interview, a modern value tuple is a lightweight way of carrying around a bunch of different data types, kind of like a data type backpack. It's best used for returning values from an asynchronous method if you don't feel like creating a class. They differ from the old .NET 4.0 tuples because you can name your own parameters, you can change the values, and you can have more than eight. Good luck on your next interview. I you know in the joint you got a caste system, you know, uh, people at the top are in for BS offenses, you know, anti-patterns, loop switch, stuff like that. And you got people like me, the mid-level guys, the guys who used a ray list and got banged up for it. Then you got the lowest of the low. Those guys, they ate exceptions. Well, that's interesting. I figured the guys who'd be lowest of the low would be SharePoint developers who called themselves programmers. Yeah, they didn't even last the bus ride, dear. Yeah.